I'm never going to go beyond what that union and relationship really is. He's my dad. I'm his son. I'm not him. Now, I think some people are beginning to push the boundary of that into, well, I'm God. You know, and well, I we're all God and we're this cosmic part of the cosmic consciousness, which is God. No, we're not. We may be united with one mind in Christ, but it's his mind that we're united with. Our minds don't make up his mind. Our mind is united to his mind. And that's where I feel some things have started to go into more of a pantheistic sort of view of this. Well, yeah, well, our, our corporate mind is God. Well, perish the thought that our corporate mind is God. I would not want eight, seven billion people, their corporate mind, making up who God is. It's like that's why there's so many different religions all believing so many different things about who God is. We just watched your video on intention. Uh, I love that. I love that video. Uh, there's a lot there that uh, you say. Now, I'm wondering, how do you apply that to co-creation? And how does that work exactly? Uh, well, not exactly, but I mean, you know. Um, when it comes to creating, you, you have to, for me, I would only create something that came out of the father's desire, out of his heart. So I'm co-creating. I'm not creating independently. So I'm always going to be engaged in the father's heart. If I'm talking about something around my own life or my own environment, and I want my intention to be blessed and favored and all of that, then I'm just outworking the father's heart as he's revealed it to me. And I can choose the realities around my life by the intention for that to form and that to be how I live and living in that place of rest. But if, if there's something which is a creative, uh, something outside of myself or my own position, then I'm going to engage in the father. And there's a process. Um, and I've, I think I've taught this process, um, but the process is to engage in the cradle of life. That is where the heart of God reveals to your heart his desires and you come into agreement with them. So it's a brooding place, a place where you become pregnant with his desire. And by brooding and meditating and just being in his heart, then you begin to resonate with his thinking, his desires. And then when you're in agreement with that, when you become in harmony, then you become the voice that can speak that into being. So then there is a process where you engage in that voice. It's like the, the waterfall. Uh, where the sound of many waters, where you are the voice of God and engaging, becoming his voice then takes you to a place where you eventually end up in the chamber of creation and you can go through various stages to get there. Um, and in that place, then when you speak, light responds and you can create. Now, now, I'm describing a process that becomes a state of being in the when I created, for instance, some guardian beings. I didn't. Um, I didn't consciously go through all of those steps. It's like, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. It, it It's where I dwell and where I live. So when. I was in the Council of Guardians and they said, will you create some guardians? And I was a little bit taken aback in the, I'd never asked, heard another being ask me to make some more of them before. So I went to the father and checked it out. And it's like, do I have permission to do this? Is this your heart? And he, and he was a bit like, well, of course it is. You know, they're a council of guardians. They're not going to tell you anything which is not according to my heart. So, oh, yeah, okay. So, but I was just learning. And, um, but he said, yeah. And then I was sort of intimating, well, how do I do it? And he said, well, you know how to do it. It's the same way you do everything, you know, uh, by intention. 
And so then armed with that, I, 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 in a sense, I already knew the father's heart. I had chosen to come into agreement with it. So I really didn't have to go and sit in the cradle of life to find what was his thoughts. His thoughts had already been directed towards me by the guardians in effect. And if I just said yes to them, knowing that the father had directed them, then I would have short stepped a whole lot of faffing around trying to work out what I should be doing. Um, and then I went back to the council of guardians and by intention, I just released that intention to create and that creation formed. So light responded to my um, desire. Now I did ask the father, well, why are there not enough guardians? You know, it's like, why should I, I don't, you know, it's almost like, well, why, why should I be creating more guardians? Didn't you create enough in the first place? <laughs> that was my sort of underlying thought, although I didn't voice it, um, but I, I, it was in my mind. It's like, you know, but then what he said was, because he knew what I was thinking, um, he said, well, we've left many things undone and incomplete for you as our sons to complete. So that is the co-creating that we're we're engaged in. You know, there are things that they deliberately have chosen for us to be able to complete, fulfill and everything else. Um, so it was a simple thing then of releasing the intention. I create some guardians, you know, and um, I didn't exactly think about, well, how many am I going to create? You know, and I could have asked, well, how many do you need? But I didn't feel to do that because it felt like that I'm only going to be one of many who may be creating things. Therefore, I don't want to create everything needed if others also need to be part of it. So I think I created three guardians. Um, now, when I create something, I am not the, oh, they're going to be looking with green cloaks and this, that and the other. I, I'm function over form. You know, so the guardian's function is what I'm looking to see fulfilled, not they're going to look like this, look like that. And they're going to have all these intricate, this. I'm really not that bothered. as so long as they do what they're supposed to do. Now I've shared this with some others and Nancy Cohen being one of them. And she said, Oh, can we go and, can we go and engage and do some more? And I thought, well, okay, if that's, we go and ask the father, if that's okay. So, and then, but she's very creative. So like she started to create these things with all these colors and these things, whatever. And, <laughs> and I'm sort of like, okay, but we're all different, you see. And they all look like the things that she chose to create. She just was more specific in what they were going to look like, you know, all that stuff. Whereas I really was more, no, I want to create these beings to fulfill their function. Therefore, they're going to fulfill their function no matter what they look like. But in general, they were like the other guardians, you know. But I didn't particularly, you know, think about, well, they need to look like this or that or the other. It was more birthed out of the desire to outwork the father's heart. And then that took place. So it wasn't it wasn't sort of a. An exercise that I had to go through the whole process in, because literally I'd stepped into the process a bit further along. And and in a sense. I didn't go into the chamber of creation to release it because I was in the council of guardians and actually that is where they needed to be created, you know, but other things that need to come into this dimension or into this realm or other things, the chamber of creation is where light is waiting for the voice to form a reality and literally collapse away function into something tangible. Um, and there's the, a limit to what you can do i mean i can't just go and do whatever i want and i would never want to do that but when i do engage it it is like light is a swirling dancing living thing quantum lumens that when i speak and i'm not talking about you know having to speak words with my mouth because i'm in the spirit but when i'm releasing my intention as my thoughts in words, because they are words, you know, literally light responds and you can see it begin to move into formation until something is formed um, in that way.
So, you know, I, I learned the process by backwards in effect, because uh, I went into the chamber of creation first, you know, and in engaging in that chamber, wondered what everything was. And I went in there, not on my own. I went in there with Nancy and Justin and a few others. And we were, what is this place? You know, and actually, you know, it was something that we were all drawn to, you know, on one of the backgrounds that I have of the cosmic reef. And there's a blue sort of portal. And in the middle, there's a point of light. Um, literally, you could say it's an event horizon from that realm into this realm which releases creativity. Um, but then once I had um, experienced the chamber of light and we engaged the quantum lumens and we named them and we began to engage with them, I then went back through the process. I'd been in the chamber of destiny before because that's where I was given direction by Enoch and others to do certain things, quests that I was given. Um, and that was behind the waterfall um, where the sound of many waters is. And I'd been in that waterfall many times. And I'd sort of gone up the waterfall and discovered this cave. And in this sort of chamber, there was Enoch. And Enoch directed me to certain quests that I was called to fulfill. Um, now, that all sort of linked together. But what wasn't what I wasn't clear about was okay well how do you get from to the here to this point how do i become the sound of many waters how can my voice be the voice of god and then that's when the father took me and i was sort of in his garden and there were these golden gates and these this is all sort of slightly symbolic i guess and i went through the gates and i found myself in this place of light which was familiar in that i'm in the heart of god effectively in engaging and i began just to you know it wasn't it wasn't like i was trying to figure something out or work it out what do i do how do i do it because i've been in the father's garden many times and basically you you just rest there you just are you don't ask questions you don't try and figure out what to do you just come to a place of total rest and it all begins to unfold so going through these sort of golden gates into this place it was like i just totally relaxed and i just floated in the, in it and that was the place of brooding where it was like something was being incubated god's thoughts god's desires that was beginning to touch me and in touching me i began to resonate with those thoughts my thoughts and his thoughts were in agreement in harmony and then literally uh, that I was his voice. I could speak those thoughts into being. So I went um, to, you know, the, the waterfall. It was like something's happened in me. Something is, 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 is pregnant in me. How do I release it? And I found myself at the waterfall and literally the sense of the sound of many waters, I was sort of, formed into that sound it was like my thoughts were his thoughts but i was not yet a sound i was not yet the frequency of it and by being there under the waterfall that for me sort of formed me into a sound that meant i the light would respond to me as it would respond to god you know um because we are his voice because we've incubated his heart we're ready to give birth to his heart therefore how does he create things he calls things that be not as if they are so now i'm the voice that can call things and they will be in that well now this is not a well i can do whatever i want it's it is very specifically aligned to what i've resonated with and come into a harmony with it doesn't mean, oh, I'm the voice of God and everything I say will just instantly happen. You know, now that might be what we become when we become fully mature and fully um, ascended fathers, if you like, in that in that role. But at the moment, you know, I, I go through the process. I want to know the father's heart. 
Now, you can be dwelling in that place continually in a sense of Jesus was only doing what he saw the father doing. So he was connected to the father's heart all the time. The father was in him. He was in the father. There was this relationship. But for Jesus enabled him to know the father's heart and then at work it practically on earth. But he was his voice. You know, if the whole process was still taking place. Just whatever he was doing in the spirit was out working simultaneously on earth. You know, it was, you know, but I sort of had to learn the process. But you can become in tune with the father's heart. So I let's say I walk into a situation and I feel the father's heart in that situation. <laughs> I then can see, well, what what am I called to do here? Because the gap between being his voice and engaging the chamber of creation is, is this aligned to my destiny? Am I, what? How am I supposed to outwork this through me? So there's, there's still, I'm still part of the process. And it's not automatic. It's almost like you you are his voice, but now how how is that outwork through who you are as a son in destiny in your destiny? Um, and that might be different for other people than it is for me. So how I outwork it in the chamber of creation is dependent on how it aligns to who I am in a creative way. You know, I don't go and do it like Nancy or Justin or anyone else would do it. I am out working it through me. Therefore, there is a step there in which I become entwined or one with, in union with that desire, being his voice. But now I creatively choose how to express that, which is why when Nancy and myself created these beings we did it differently and they they the result was the same there was more guardians but the creative process was somewhat different you know and that's how it's supposed to be because we're all uniquely different mm -hmm. and we are created in god's image and likeness to be an expression as a son not to be a formula or a clone of how to do it so Jesus healed people many different ways. I think as an example to say, look, there's not just one way of doing this. You can choose whichever way you want to do this through who you are. Therefore, my thought processes in my heart will be different from yours. So it was very unlikely that anything would ever be exactly the same. Because God is releasing his heart not a set of detailed plans and architect's drawings of what you've got to do. Otherwise, it just becomes you just end up being a robot that fulfills a program. Whereas it's not like that. God is including us in the creative process that enables us to outwork that process through us, which is, I think, great. You know, I think, I think it shows how God treats us uh, and sees us and how he's made us and trusts us to be an expression of his heart you know and if you're not free from the view of well i've got to please god and be obedient and do it all the right way then you'll have fear attached to the process well i've got to do it right you know you've got to become free from fear and free from duty and obligation to be yourself you know and be an expression of your creative self in how you outwork the father's heart and therefore we could have 10 people in a room all outworking the father's heart and it would all look different but the result would all be the same you know and i think that's that's just how god is wonderful and hasn't made us all identical but has uniquely and wonderfully made us and has mm -hmm. wonderful thoughts about us and who we actually are I see. So you just answered my question. So it's it's everyone is different, and it's about relationship. I was wondering, yeah. well, perhaps 
maybe there's a frequency that we needed to have or or maybe we needed to hum or maybe we needed a but that's not it either necessarily well if it works for you yeah i mean it's okay i mean <laughs> in brooding right me, thank you it's a silent thing in that i am just yeah, it's like you know, what a brooding thing is is like a bird brooding on a, a set of eggs. So they're sitting on the edge, they're brooding, they're keeping the eggs warm. The eggs are developing while they're keeping them warm, ready for them to hatch. So that brooding is a process where I am aligning, being aligned to the father's heart's thoughts and desires. He's revealing them. They are changing me. Reson I, you know, I'm being entrained, if you like, in terms of resonance, that frequency of his thoughts is bringing me into agreement. So I am harmonized with it. And when I am harmonized with it and it's fully formed in me, in a sense, then it's ready to go to the next stage. But that could take a minute. It could take an hour. It could take whatever, depending on what needs to happen. How much does God show you and reveal in the process? You know, is he giving you every detail or is he sharing his intention and desires and thoughts so that then you can then begin to creatively express those? And I think that's how it works for me. So am I becoming a frequency? Yes, because I am his voice. You know, therefore, I am vibrating and resonating with creative energy. And... Um, I don't hum in my, in, but, but I, that could be a way of, you know, uh, expressing that. And people do do things like that in, in a sense, um, in a meditative way. You know, sometimes they focus their thinking on a particular thing or they meditate in a, in a sand or they use a bowl or they use a frequency to help focus them. You know, and none of that is wrong. And I, and it's all part of what works for people. Um, for me, it all works inside my head, in a sense of I am aligning my my thoughts are being aligned and entrained to his. So it's, it's that sort of simple process. I haven't really thought of the mechanics of it, um, but it's very clearly, you know, I know a frequency what it is god's voice is a frequency and when god speaks that frequency vibrates with energy and has creative power to release the result of what he says you know um so you know there's no right or wrong exact way otherwise it would become a formula and everyone would try and copy the formula rather than embracing the pr the process and in the process at working that through you um, and if you hum a sound in light response to it great that works for you all good you know for me it's more i focus my intention in my thoughts and those thoughts are active and carry creative power and then light responds and the wave function collapses if you like in a quantum sense so i understand the science behind it and therefore you know i i'm not really so much about the mechanics um in that way but i'm sure other people would do it differently you know i know when i've engaged with nancy sometimes she does hum she does make sounds sometimes quite odd sounds you know and they're like oh what's going on you know but that's part of her way of doing stuff you know, and I know when we were looking to engage the energy gates and we did an activation on the energy gates in a, in one of the Restoration of All Things conferences that we did, the first one, I think, she used an, a number of different sounds. Um, and in saying the sounds, she put a physical action with it that was all part of getting people tuned to it. So there would be a sound, an O or an E or an O or whatever. There were seven different sounds and there were seven different actions. And when it put together, for me, it was a bit like a line dance. 
It's like, you know, what's going on? He was like, everyone's moving and yeah, all this. But she was just trying to break down the process for people. Uh, and I've sort of seen something like it in a in a online movie thing or TV series. Um, I can't remember what it was called. Is it the AO or something? And in that, there were there was these three or four people and they all had one sound. And when they put them together, it made this energy that opened up a portal. And it is like that. You know, you're producing energy. People will do it differently. When I activate the energy gates, I don't make sounds or go and do line dancing. It's like it, it's not me. You know, I just not, not how I would do anything in a in a making a singing and making a, a a dance out of it. But for it would work if that's how it works for you. And it certainly Nancy, that's how she did it. You know, for me, it was just like, oh, I just think about activating that gate and intentionally activate it. I don't have to go through sort of waving my arms or doing this or doing the other, but she was doing an exercise to try and get people engaged. And it was the engaging that people, and I went and did the engagement and you know I felt the energy and the activation while I was doing the engagement, but it's not how I would normally do things myself, but it's okay. And you may find, you know, a particular way of doing it works for you, you know? in producing a physical sound or a movement, you know, and I know in watching the TV thing, each sound had sort of a hand movement. And as people were moving things, literally in the movie thing, they connected to another dimension. It opened something, you know, and I, I resonated with it because I'd seen Nancy do it. So it was like, oh, they're picking up something prophetic here, um, which is, you know hollywood's sort of way of you know showing that um but you know i know there's a something real about how you engage that and, and do something like that so mike yeah. you guys are so much fun i love <laughs> listening and watching you guys we learn so much thank you so much <laughs> okay yeah i mean I mean, I learned, I have a lot of fun learning how to do all this stuff as well. You know, I didn't start off knowing anything and it wasn't like, oh, I'm an expert in this. this is a, you know, I went bit by bit and sometimes backwards into it, you know, because God just sort of opened this and, oh, how does this work? And then took me through the process, but ended up in the beginning because I'd already seen what happens at the end, you know, and that's sometimes that way it works. And sometimes, you know, it, there's something that, I only put together in hindsight, realizing that five things that I've done over the last nine months are all connected. I didn't see the connection at the time. I just learned nine things. Then, ah, now these I see how these nine things fit together into a pattern that then is something that is a creative place to to release something. But I didn't know what I was doing all the way through. You know, it's a little bit like, you know, you just sort of keep going and uh, eventually it makes sense, you know, to the degree it does. But it's it's a fun, interesting journey. You know, it's, it's not um, it's not this classroom that you're sitting there with a teacher who's really stern. It's supposed to be fun. You know, it's supposed to be life. You know, it's not like, oh, I've got to do this and. You know, it's all heavy. It's not like responsibility in heaven. It's not heavy. Oh, I carry the weight of this responsibility. I've got to get it right. It's not like that. It's a privilege to be involved, really. that That's how I feel about it. Hi, Pops, Mike. Hi. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if you made a video on this or not. Um, so, I feel kind of feel bad for asking. Okay. Um, but... My question, actually, because I feel like, uh, I feel like God is like, he's like deconstructing like ideas of like separation that was kind of put here by like what we've been learning in church and stuff. And since we stopped going to church and all that. And, um, I guess what I'm, what, what I've been asking people and I haven't quite got like, um, I don't know, like an answer where, 
I guess I could kind of understand it a little more was, um, I guess, what is um, like union with God? Like, Okay. no, now we're in, you know, because of the incarnation and now like, you know, or we're in union we, and I don't know, like Hmm. Yeah. we're, we were always in union and now we're just awakening to it because of Jesus. And I, I would love to hear your, <laughs> Okay. yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, it's a journey that everyone sort of comes from a different place to. And, you know, there's the theological sense of, you know, that we are included in Christ and God's in us and we're in him. And, and you know, but most people know that's true, but most people have never really experienced that truth. So it just becomes, well, here's the theology of union. This is what the Bible says. Well, you know, God is not so much interested in theology as experience. So what does it mean to be in union? And I would say that there's a process that takes us into deeper union. You know, becoming one, you know, whoever's joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Okay, well, how do you become joined to the Lord? Because it, it just says whoever is one joined to the Lord. Well, how do you become joined to the Lord? Is that something you do? Is it something he does? Is it a process of relationship? For me, it was a it was a, a invitation to come into a consummated relationship of intimacy that took me through uh, a marriage, if you like. You know, that that's how it was for me. So I began to engage the father within the garden of my heart that began to become an intimate place where he looked into my eyes. and communicated his desire for relationship and oneness with me. Now, I didn't know what that meant. I just received the invitation to become one. Will, will you marry me, let's say, was the sort of his desire. He was showing me that he wanted relationship with me. And then as I came into agreement with that, oh yeah, I want that. I want that. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know how it would be outworked because I only looked backwards to see it was like a process of marriage. I didn't know that that was happening in the beginning. God never said, will you marry me? What he said was, I want you to be mine, you know, and, and as words to that effect, you know, but the emotion was, and I felt the deep desire of his heart for that oneness. even though I couldn't describe what oneness and union was at that point. But I responded with yes. My heart was yes, you know, and therefore we spent time just being together to which I began to know him better heart to heart. So there was this cardiogenosis knowledge of the heart that took place, not so much him telling me things, or speaking to me in that place. Um, now, we did have many conversations uh, in other places, and we had conversations, you know, when we would just engage and I would be hanging out with him and I would journal the conversations, great. In that place, it was almost silent. But I learned to know his heart and I learned to feel and sense And I think that was the place that really started to prepare me for deconstruction, because what I was feeling from his heart to know his heart didn't align up with my thoughts. Because my thinking about God was what I'd been taught on what I believed, and that has come through my religious teaching upbringing and stuff. And so as God was revealing how good and wonderful he is, my mind couldn't accept that. Wow. It was just too hard. No, I didn't know what that preparation was about until later. You go back and say, then when God begins to deconstruct that way of thinking about what happens to people after they die or hell or any of those things, It takes you back to what you discovered in that moment. God is good. God is love. 
all of that, then it's like, oh, this makes total sense. It's at that point when the deconstruction takes place, it's like the cognitive dissonance happened when God revealed his heart and my mind couldn't take it in. You know, it was just too much, too good to take in, if you like. So there was cognitive dissonance. You know, God was revealing something that my mind couldn't cope with. But that was OK, because that was part of when he then actually started to tackle different belief systems and things I believed. When he tackled it, it wasn't like, no, I'm not agreeing with that because I already agreed with it in my heart. Now <laughs> with my mind. So it was just aligning. My, my heart was my mind was aligning to my heart, you know, and it, for most of it, although, you know, the deconstruction process is not an easy one if you come through quite theological background and you have set pattern of beliefs you know obviously i came from an evangelical background developed into into uh, charismatic and then sort of moving on into sort of a more of a mystical thing it's like this was a journey that I was just walking. I didn't really know where I was going when I started, you know, and I just carried on walking it out. But I, the deconstruction was such that most of the time it was really easy just to, oh yeah, why did I ever believe that in the first place? That was most of my reaction to the, the, the things that God was challenging me about. Oh yeah, that's so obvious, but I couldn't see it. You know, there were a few things that I thought, oh, this is going to get me into a lot of hassle with people if I go down this route. But very quickly, it's like, oh, well, OK, that's OK. You know, I'm just going to have to accept that's what's going to happen. If it happens, that's fine. You know, so for most of it, it, it was a my heart was already attuned to what my mind later would have to face. Um, and that was all in the garden of the heart um you know it was all there in the garden in the lacar in the i want you for my own um that prepared me to then take me into the next process which was the the dance floor and the entwining and becoming one there in a in an embrace in an intimacy and as God danced me around, it was revealing my identity to me and revealing how that was my destiny was to be, you know, and I didn't again, I didn't know what was going on and I was just dancing around. And sometimes it seemed like we moved into this area of light and it was like, whoa, this is amazing. And sometimes we went into an area of dark and it was like. It revealing areas in me that were unknown and I couldn't connect to because they had no illumination on them. Now, I think, well, why would God take you in the dark? Because you're not ready for what is there yet. They're, they're the things that where it says about that God has hidden things for us to discover. And some things there were illumination and it was amazing. And other things there was mystery, you know, and it was a mystery which I wasn't ready yet to enter into, but the experience prepared me for what was to come, you know? So it was almost like I am receiving mystery about who I am and what my destiny is that I'm not yet, my, my, let's say my mind is not yet capable of taking it in, but, something in my spirit connected to it but then when came the next stage because then we moved from the dance floor and the entwining to the soaking room which was the place of now you've got a you know the preparation is here whether it's being soaked and and cleansed and washed and prepared or purified or engaging the altar of fire and the fire consuming everything you know there are different ways of viewing that process and both of them were true for me in that place i was motivated to go through that process by what had happened in the previous two places 
So I did wasn't resistant, but I you know to initially, you know, because there was this invitation to participate. But what God was doing was getting me to the point where I would be able to totally surrender. So that soaking room ended up into the dark cloud experience where I had to come to the end of my soul. My soul could not go any further into the mysteries that were revealed in on the dance floor. I couldn't go any further until I, my soul and spirit were separated and reintegrated. Because my soul was still had a measure of control, but also motivation in that I needed to validate my identity by doing things. Well, that was not going to work because everything about who you are is about a state of being, not a state of doing. So I had to go through the dark cloud experience and come to the point of surrender. Jesus separating my soul, spirit, the thoughts and intentions of my heart you know bone marrow the sort of the source of my life was in him not in myself all of that needed dealing with he dealt with it over a four month period of quite intense emotional pain <laughs> if it was pain for me my soul because my soul had to recognize what it was like independently of spirit and god you know and i didn't like it you know but you know, God allowed me to voice my feelings and emotions and everything else to come to the point where hands up, I give up, do what you need to do, you know? So then once I had gone through that and then reintegrated me and made me whole sort of spirit, soul, body in a, in a, in a sense of wholeness, um, and my soul no longer needed to validate itself and no longer needed to dictate you know, the terms of what I was doing when I was doing it, suddenly my soul and spirit were then operating in different realms, but connected, you know, my, my reintegration from spirit to soul was with a quantum entangled perspective that I could be anywhere, you know, and my spirit functioned in that realm. Whereas before I was tied to my soul. So I would go into heaven, come back out, go in, come back out you know, rather than my spirit dwelling there, seated with Christ in heavenly places, the consciousness of my spirit, although I was seated with Christ in heavenly places, the conscious connection to it was unable to be understood or, or realized because my soul kept coming back out, you know, and therefore this tether was very much outside in short. I was going in, having amazing experiences, coming back out. But God wanted me to dwell there consciously in my spiritual consciousness, which connected to my physical consciousness, if you like, of my mind. And I was operating in a way which wasn't in union and oneness, but that brought it all together. And then things changed quite dramatically and all sorts of things opened up from that point. And then ultimately then going into union in the bridal chamber. Now, this is not a sexual union, but it's just as deep as a sexual union, because that is what 1 Corinthians 6, 17 describes. Whoever's joined to the Lord will go back a verse and it talks about whoever's joined to a prostitute becomes one flesh with her. So there's this sense of this is real union. Now, again, I didn't know what to expect, you know, and I had these things like I'm invited to come into this place. Well, I went in to the meet the person of God. You know, that's the union that took place. Now, having gone through this whole process, uh, having had my soul spirit separated and reintegrated, I went into the person of God and face to face engaged with God. I couldn't cope. You know, literally, I was like, whoa, too much, too much for me. You know, my limited belief mind whatever just could not cope with the experience so i came back out really quickly but i had seen god and i had experienced something that was too wonderful for me to explain or to experience with my belief of who god was 
because again this again set up cognitive dissonance and prepared me for re experiencing the true god because my religious god didn't line up with what i felt in that brief experience it was just too wonderful for who i believe god was you know in my mind so i had to go through the to know god so the union was actually becoming to know him and dwell with him so this is back in 2012 i then went through you know years of deconstruction of actually seeing who god really was becoming more intimate in who the true god having that false god and the god who needed me to serve him and needed me to be obedient to him and needed my duty and obligation and all of that stuff you know that all fell away as he began to challenge it the old covenant god that i was still believing in you know all of that was being challenged the whole process unveiled the true nature of god to me and all the way through that i i still had encounters that brought me to a different place and i went through the firestone experiences of you know nine encounters on the firestones which took me into different levels of identity as a son and you know what all that was about so there were many different strands of experience that were all leading me to union and you know i look back now and think wow god had a big job on his hand to get me to this place you know you know and because i was so far from it but i've just carried on with the journey and the different strands not knowing how they would all fit together you know they they were all experiences and encounters i didn't understand they they were linked and there was a goal at the end of it but there was so during the next i i guess 2012 to maybe 2017 18 i went through many experiences and encounters that truly started to reveal the true nature of god and i began to meet him face to face more often and i was able to stay there longer until i was able to dwell and you remain in that place where i engage god in the light of perfection in this realm of light in the realm of perfection connected to eternity uh, and connected to the eternal now and that face-to-face heart-to-heart mind-to-mind union where i became one with his mind the mind of christ i became one with his heart and that place of union is where he reveals on a daily basis if you like his heart his intentions you know not as a series of instructions or a list of things to do today but more an authorization to be to be me and my destiny is not a series of things i'm going to do it is who i am it is the revelation of who i am which then enables me to outwork the things I, I do as a result of who I am. But before I was doing things that validated who I was. Now, because I know who I am in union, I am not doing anything independently because I'm in union. I dwell and remain and abide in that place of oneness. So for me, this is a long journey that was needed to get me to that place where i would say that i am in union and along the way it was like i'm one spirit well what does that mean because obviously my spirit is a being how can i be one spirit well that was helping me discover my origin in god my original origin in the heart of god where my spirit was formed out of his spirit because he is spirit everything comes out of him and my spirit was formed 
and I became sentient and an a, a, a individual being, but not independent of God. And therefore, you know, I existed as a being before I ever came into this realm. Um, and I began to rediscover what it was to be one spirit in that way. So it became more seamless. Was the Holy Spirit telling me something or was my spirit speaking to me? Well, it's me. So I know things. Did that information come from God saying something or did I just know because I'm one with the mind of Christ, if you like. So it was all these things that sort of I was thinking about at, during all this process. Of like, well, how does this all this work? You know, it's like, you know, how do I understand what was going on? And I didn't really need to understand it because I was experiencing it. But if people ask you questions and you teach things, you've got to come up with some sort of way of being able to communicate. Well, what is this so that people can grasp what you're trying to say? even though words don't really fully convey everything of it it's better experienced than be told about um but you know i did my best to try and convey what was happening on the journey of me becoming one um and becoming in union now i'm never gonna go beyond what that union and relationship really is he's my dad I'm his son. I'm not him. Now, I think some people are beginning to push the boundary of that into, well, I'm God. You know, and well, I we're all God and we're this cosmic part of the cosmic consciousness, which is God. No, we're not. We may be united with one mind in Christ, but it's his mind that we're united with. Our minds don't make up his mind. Our mind is united to his mind. And that's where I feel some things have started to go into more of a pantheistic sort of view of this. Well, yeah, well, our, our corporate mind is God. Well, perish the thought that our corporate mind is God. I would not want eight, seven billion people, their corporate mind making up who God is. It's like that's why there's so many different religions all believing so many different things about who god is it's like god is god he is father son and spirit family that has birthed and formed creation and we are invited into that union and oneness with him and so i am joined to his mind and i can sense and feel his mind and the things he chooses to reveal to me but i'm not him you know so i think you tend you sometimes you get a swing too far before it comes back into balance you know the pendulum swings and then it comes back and i think some things i've seen and heard are just going too far and hopefully people will come up back into balance around it but you know it is it is a relational and experiential union of being one and having a consciousness which is not disconnected from God. It, it is in union with him and oneness with him and being connected to his mind and his heart and his thoughts so that we can be an expression of them in relationship. Um, but it is a beautiful place and it's a place of rest and it's a place of being loved. You know, how I would describe union, you know, would be absolute rest. It, you know, bliss is what other people might call that sense of being. Um, but that's not for me this, well, this outward expression where I'm wandering around all blissful. This is a union, which is a deep inner relationship, you know, that I can express and I can outwork. Um but there's there's a sense where there's still a mystery there's still more there's still a deeper place to go into it because my mind is still not capable of containing all the thoughts there are about god i've not even contained all the thoughts there are about me you know there's way more that god has thoughts about me that i don't even know yet 
you know, so let alone, you know, I, I remember, I think it was Ian Clayton was sort of talking about walking in heaven and walking with the spirit of the Lord, I think. And the spirit of the Lord saying, well, what, what do you want? And, and he, he, I think he said, well, I want to know everything. So yeah, he picked up a blade of grass and the blade of grass communicated some of what it knew and he he dropped it because it was too much for his mind one blade of grass was too much let alone the full mind of god you know so there is still a mystery and there's still the journey and the relationship where he reveals and unveils himself and reveals who we are um which will then take us into maturity and levels of relationship and oneness with him which are beyond where we are right now but you know i couldn't imagine anything more wonderful than what i've got right now but then i've probably said that 20 times in the past you know so you know it, it is only going to be more wonderful because god is good and he's love so you know the last couple of years when i've been sort of teaching unconditional love and now looking at the restoring of first love yeah, you know, I couldn't have actually conveyed all that a few years ago. You know, it was the foundation of when I talked about limitless grace and triumphant mercy and all those things. But I was not able to convey unconditional love because I was still at that time too, too busy with what I was doing and not enough living in a state of being. And as I was, things changed and circumstances changed and I, you know, God, first thing he did was stop me doing the Vision Destiny series and stopping me journaling was, was because he wanted to teach me how to be in union, not just have conversations with him and talk to him, but to be in union with him. And so the last few years have been discovering what it is to be in union and that is more of an intimacy and knowing him in a way where wherever i am whatever i'm doing and enjoying creation and being here in a way that i would have not been able to do if i wasn't in this state now and therefore the relationship is very different and the communication is at a deeper level of knowing rather than at a cerebral level of information that I assimilate and understand. It is, I know things. Sometimes I don't know what I know, you know, until I start doing it. And so when I started to do unconditional love, I didn't know it was going to be 23 sessions. Yeah, I could have probably done another 23 sessions on top of that if 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 I chose to carry on. But I felt that actually, no, this needs to be expressed in a slightly different way now. So that's what took place. But all of that process almost began to sum up all of the things that were my journey to get me to that point. And now, you know, restoring first love is about the some of the process that I've described today of the relationship of the intimacy that brings me to the place of union and oneness. Um, but I haven't fully put it all together. I'm still sort of exploring what happened and what was God doing and how did he do this? And what did that mean to me by looking back at the process and trying to understand it from what I know now from a place of union rather than from how he was trying to get me into a place of union and of course i had to go through all those processes for him to do it you know no i you know fortunately i didn't try to get in the way or help him out or try and do it myself i just let him do it because i i trusted him i got to the point where when i went through the dark cloud i trusted him implicitly no matter what he was going to do or what it looked like on the surface I trusted him. Now, through that period, that trust was tested 
when things go wrong or things don't work out how you think they should work out and you start well why is this happening god you come down to the thing of i don't know but i trust you so whatever you're going to bring out of this i trust you that is going to be for my good and benefit i don't understand i wouldn't have done it this way i wouldn't have wanted to go through this or this or the things i've gone through emotionally and the betrayals i've had and the different things that have happened to me but what it did it showed me that i trusted god even when i didn't know and understand what was going on and sometimes that is the key yeah while i'm going through it sometimes it's too much for me to understand but i trust god so i just hold on to his hand you know trusting that he's going to lead me through whatever i'm going through and he's going to heal me and restore me and use that situation in my life to bring me into a state now you know and if i wasn't where i am now that union that i have now wouldn't be possible so i had to go through the processes that brought me to here um and that was something which was really hard at times when i had to let go of certain things that i felt i need to fight for and god was saying no let go well i can't let go it's not right to let go well i'm telling you to let go you know then well what am i going to do well let go even though i didn't want to and i still felt like oh, i don't want to let go i want to i want to fight for this no god knows better and even though it's like this doesn't compute to my mind how this could be he knew and he was all part of unfolding and outworking through difficult situations something that would bring me into a place of union that i never dreamt really possible you know um so you know it's a it's a journey it's not an easy thing to explain and i don't think you can truly know what it is until you experience it yourself through who you are with god because it, it won't be the same as i feel or sense or feel in a sense the overall picture of it is but the individual elements of it you've not come from the same place i've come from you know so you won't take the same journey that i take but you will up in end up in the same destination and you will be able to probably like me say well i can't really explain it but you know when you get there but you know it how good it is and how how it feels like it was always supposed to feel because you are discovering you're the origin that you had in spirit before you came into a physical dimension and then the soul and body that has only lived in this physical dimension catches up with the knowledge that your spirit has so you become one in that knowledge with him and then that union is in the core of your being which then connects to the energy that you have the life that you have the river of life the energy of life the Merkaba within the core, your connection to creation is discovered in the innermost parts where that union of Father, Son, and Spirit and Spirit, Soul, and Body are one there. So there is a sort of a place within where that oneness takes place, if you like, as well as you being in him. You know, I dwell in the realm of face-to-face -face with God, but God also dwells within me in that union at the core of my being um which is why you you have to be able to function in two dimensions or multiple dimensions really but you know at least the inner relationship and the heavenly experience they need to be one unified um, but they're different but they're just different expressions of the same union you know that we experience here and we experience there you know but whatever i experience there is connected to me here you know so it's not like i'm separated from it but i'm not always cognitive of what's happening until it becomes cognitive 
usually actually when I share it with other people. You know, I suddenly start sharing things which are not cognitive memories of knowledge that I have, you know, and that sort of is a, is a constant experience, which is great, you know, because you don't have to figure it out and work it all out. You just have to learn to be. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.